the red light on. I don't press it and the red light doesn't go up. Okay, so we do the, we do the Course in Miracles here and I'm also a student of Dr. Hawkins, Dr. David R. Hawkins, he's a teacher of enlightenment. So this is a very advanced group. Uh, what I mean by that, and, uh, probably the wrong choice of words, but it means that it's going to bring up a lot of ego stuff if you, if you do something like The Course of Miracles or Dr. Hawkins' work in a very uh, aggressive way. So once you start to experience these sort of, uh, I mean, the, the Course of Miracles, you call it being in the holy instant or being in the enlightened state or being in the observer, being in that uh, timeless, timeless eternal now, so as you start to be in this, of course, when you're in that state, it'll be like, uh, and if you do this kind of work, Course in Miracles, The Observer, Dr. Hawkins' work, you'll, and no one will do this work. No one's going to read The Course in Miracles and carry on doing it unless they have an affinity for it, because, you know, you just can't, you know. That book, and, and also dissolving your ego is not something that people do for hobbies. You have to have a spiritual aptitude for it. You have to be spiritually ready to be able to carry on doing this work, otherwise you, you run 100 miles. But as you do this work and you have the aptitude and you start to go into these, uh, these, flow, these flow states where everything miraculously unfolds, synchronistically unfolds, uh, the ego will come up at certain points and um, will try and derail the process. And the thing is, um, see, so you have your karma. You have your karma uh, from this lifetime. You have your karma from other lifetimes. And you also have your, you, you have your positive karma. You might have been like a monk or a nun in a past lifetime. You might have done a lot of good deeds. So you may suddenly find out that you come to the right group, meet the right teacher, or just go spontaneously into these transformative spiritual states, and you don't know why. And that's, that can be because you've been doing uh, spiritual work not just in this lifetime but another lifetime so synchronistically things al align very quickly I'm pretty sure that was the case for me uh, um, I had a muscle someone yeah you know, I've had quite a lot of, um, uh, through uh, muscle testing I know that I've had a lot of li uh, past lifetimes I'm sure I've done spiritual work but also had lifetimes where I was probably quite a horrible naughty person doing well I mean you know, in, the, in the in the dark ages who knows what I was doing all the things that people do in the dark ages to each other. So, so as you start to go into, you get this, you get, you get into the course of miracles. You go into these sublime states. Uh, it's, it's, it's common to be uh, for things to come up because remember, when you go into the observer, when you go into these mystical states, you know everything within your ego in the beginning. I'm going to start doing. I'm going to have less people because I'm going to talk about karma. And the, and the downside to spiritual work, is not, which is probably what a lot of people don't want to hear, but as you go into these spiritual states, you know, anything that is within you, within your karmic, uh, within your karma, that is not, has not yet been transcended, will eventually come up. You know, you can't escape not resolving all your stuff. So you might be going, you might go to a spiritual group, you might do the Course of Miracles intensely, and you're going off into this bliss state, so like miracles, it might happen for weeks, you can sometimes have these flow states happening for weeks or months, and then something happens and you can get pulled down aggressively fast. And that is just the nature, you know, if you make a, if there's a call from the soul, the spirit, uh, to be absolutely free and in that state and at the highest level, then by definition, everything has to be transcended, that's dark from within. So, you know, while you go in, and often the way to see it, which Dr. Wilkins said, which is very useful, you start to do your spiritual work and you go into these wonderful spiritual states, and that is the calling of how you'll be most of the time. Eventually that will be very, very common, and it will be much more rare for that to be broken. But in the beginning, you get glimpses, you get catapulted into it, especially in the early days when you're doing the work, and you can go into very sublime states. And, and you go into these synchronistic, beautiful states where you, know, you can have wonderful opportunities coming your way, incredible things happening. And then at a certain point, it's like the ego comes up and synchronistic events manifest from what's within the ego. And these, uh, these tests start to rise. And it's common to have like extreme derailings. 
you know, which take you down very, very deep. And those are like spiritual tests. You know, the thing to realize, if you're in a spiritual state, everything's going to and you suddenly get pulled down, something very extreme uh, happens. It's like something from your own ego has manifested, or it could be something from the collective ego. But in the beginning, it's probably more likely to be from your personal ego, because in the early days, uh, it's more your personal stuff, which is coming up for you to resolve. It comes up, and it can sometimes pull you down a little bit, and sometimes it can pull you down extremely fast. Especially if you're doing stuff like the Observer Course in Miracles, aiming for enlightenment over freedom, the ego is going to be under extreme threat, more than a 12-step program. Because the 12 steps takes you to, it takes you to a dualistic level of freedom. But the Course in Miracles and Enlightenment takes you to non-dualistic freedom. So that's even more extreme, you know, that is on a scale much more threatening to the ego than just doing 12 steps. 12 steps is quite threatening, but non-dual Course in Miracles Enlightenment stuff is extremely threatening. So you can expect sometimes when the e if you're in the observer or something, that at times you will be pulled down aggressively. That's to be expected. And the ego will be fishing around to orchestrate events. You know, I know people, you know, events, options for events come up where you can be extremely disconnected uh, because that's what the ego wants. You know, if it can derail you, uh, if you're in 12-step recovery, take you into addiction and take you really down and keep you down for a period of time, it can disrupt you. It, you know, it can disrupt you so badly that it might take you a very long time to get back to, to where you are. So for people who are new and are experiencing extreme spiritual states, uh, sometimes people who come to this group go into very sublime or amazing spiritual states, but you're still new. You've got to realize, and you can't expect not to be challenged from your ego. And the ego is going to come up with all kinds of slippery things. I was talking to a fellow during the week. You know, just because you go off into the observer, it's like, almost like you feel you're beyond the world. It's almost like you feel things are synchronistically folding. And you can get tiny little whispers of things, which, which you may, you're not yet mature enough to be able to discern that something is what's called out of context. So as Hawkins says, once you're in these high evolved spiritual states for long enough, you get what, spiritually speaking, the, um, uh, the awakening of the third eye, which is spiritual discernment. It doesn't happen in the beginning. So that you also intuitively have the wisdom to discern truth from falsehood. Uh, in the early days, you don't have that, humans don't have that until you get to very advanced level of spiritual con. Even when you're in the observer, it doesn't mean the third eye is open. Mm -hmm. Even though you feel like you're observing the world and you're beyond the world, and everything is miraculously unfolding, it's not yet the... Uh, so, someone says like, hey, do you want to come, do you want to, come to this party? You know, that, that's not necessarily God speaking to you, come, come down to this party just because you're in the observer and you think, that sounds like a great idea, that's probably God telling me to go to this party. No, that's like, you know, the, your ego, shall we say your ego is colluding with the collective ego to derail, because as you start to go into these states, you're a threat to the dominion of, the, of your, e your own ego and the collective ego. The co your ego and the collective ego. And, uh, uh, and when I say the collective ego, I'm talking your ego, and everyone who's in a body's ego, and also those things which are out of body, those negative energies which are out of body, that is all conspiring as you're going into the light to pull you out in some way, synchronistically align events. Where do these events come? The, you know, we talk from classical you have your chakras. When you start to do your spiritual work, you have not yet transcended all the lessons in all your chakras. You'd be very, very naive just because you're in the observer and you're having miracles non-stop to think you've transcended every single lesson. There is. So be, you know, so this is the thing that I haven't really explained before. Like you're neat, you have to have the humility, even if you're experiencing these states, to realize that not every event that comes your way, not every thought that pops up is, is a divine thought or a divine situation. 
you know, uh, that you haven't yet got spiritual, that's very advanced to get spiritual discernment, where you're able to, to see things, because you're still seeing things, you're witnessing things, but you haven't got spiritual discernment. So be very careful with whatever thoughts and opportunities come your way. Um, it is, um, and be, when, you, when you get pulled down, what do you do when you get pulled down? Okay, and if you get pulled down very severely, like you start to, your head starts to spin, you feel severely disconnected. Um, the thing I do is to realize, when you get disconnected from the observer, from sublime spiritual states, realize that, and Hawkins is very good, when you go into negative states of consciousness, like fear, anxiety, disconnection, uh, feeling ungrounded, realize that those states are levels of consciousness and so you're on now a radio station, a wave band, where all your thoughts, you're picking up thoughts from the collective at that wave band. Does that make sense? If so what do I mean? Like if you go down to, you're in bliss and oneness and flow and you go down to fear, you are now on radio fear, okay? All the thoughts you pick up are going to be from the radio station, radio fear, you know? So now that you're in that energy of fear, all your thinking, you're picking up thoughts from the collective, the collective radio station of fear, on the different types of fear thoughts. Once I realize that is when I'm, when I'm disconnected, like all my thinking is correlated to that radio station. So when I get disconnected, if I go into fear or do a disconnected state, you know, what I tend to do is I know I have to reconnect. All my thinking is going to be rubbish until I reconnect. Because I'm on radio, let's say I go to fear, I'm on radio fear. Should I try to solve all my problems in radio fear? No. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going to get shit answers. They'll probably tell me, like, you're in fear, shoot your boss or something like that. You know, it'll come up with the ridiculous. So don't do that. What I tend to do is I might put on Hawkins or I might uh, do feel the feelings on the fear or practice, <clears throat> put on somebody who's talking about the observer and just, okay, what's observing the fear? what's observing these fearful thoughts. <clears throat> as soon as I go into the observer and, and detach from that fearful state and I go into a higher vibration, okay, now I can, now I can see what, what needs to be done. But I'm not going to do, say if I can, I just won't do anything until I reconnect. If I have to, if I've got a job that I have to attend tomorrow morning, I'll spend all the time until the job you know, maybe listening to Hawkins, doing the observer, doing feel the feelings, uh, calling up my spiritual sponsor or whatever it is, discussing things, so I can I can lean on their vibration mm -hmm. because my vibration. So I'll try to tune back to their vibration. It's going to be better than me in fear. So do those things, and uh, once I get back into those serene states, now is the time to make decisions and do things. Disconnected state. <coughs> if I'm in fear. I'll have fear thinking, I'll be tr attracting fearful situations. I'll be choosing fearful situations. I'll be speaking in a fearful way which will make situations more inflamed because mm -hmm. I'm speaking from fear. I'll get the equal... I mean, Hawkins had a book called Power Versus Force. If I speak from a place of ego, I'll be speaking from a place of force. If I speak to you from a place of anger, and I haven't resolved my anger, you know, you will come back at me because there's an equal or opposite of force. If I say, like, I don't like what you just said, don't say it again, you're going to come back because I haven't resolved my anger. So I need to get to peace or the higher vibrations and then communicate and then think and then be led from those higher vibrations. So disconnected state, if I have to go back to work, I'll spend the whole day until I go back to doing the most high leverage things to reconnect. Like I said, Hawkins, the observer, feel the feelings, speaking to other people who've got a higher spiritual feel, going to spiritual groups where I can reconnect. And then at work, you know, I might take plenty of toilet breaks just to spend time. I might, uh, if I can, you know, be doing work if I'm able to and be doing my Course in Miracles at the same time. I place my boss into God's infinite light and love and pray for a miracle. I pray for a miracle to see my, my fear of this situation differently. Uh, I cancel my belief that things are going to go wrong. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. I'll be doing that to the best of my ability during a difficult day if I haven't had the time to fully clear the state. 
as soon as the day of work's over, I'll be back to the intense spiritual work until I have to be back in there. Because mm -hmm. I need to reclaim. Everything unfolds from what is my level of consciousness. So when I get disconnected, the most important thing is to connect. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing with me. Can is you, yeah. Can you just take yourself off to bed? I mean, if you are severely exhausted, because yes. um, yeah. normally I have my notebook, I have my Dr. Hawkins teachings on Audible and also on my iPad. So I do that. Um, I've got a particular routine I do every day when I go to work. So every minute is spent on spiritual work when I'm not working. Yeah. But after that event, I just went into that I couldn't miss, I couldn't hear. I just had to take myself off to, to, to sleep, basically, to yeah. rest. Yes, no, I mean, if I'm very tired, uh, or whatever, or I'm not willing to do any spiritual work, then I'll just go to bed and put something like Hawkins on or, um, in the background. So that e even though it's, it's sort of like that energy field is going on, so if I wake up and night I have to go to the toilet, something will be said to me and I'll walk off in a daydream, come back, go to bed. Because everything is, everything has a vibration. So Hawkins was an enlightened teacher, so his voice is at that vibration of, of, of enlightenment. You know, if I listen to something like Alleluia from Pachelbel's Canon by Robert Gass, I'll be listening to that vibration. Or if I listen to Andrew Bocelli, <clears throat> I'll be listening to, to that vibration. So yeah, I'll put on the highest vibration. I don't have to be awake for that. I'll go, I'm not up to sleep. Much better than putting on a horror movie and, and nodding off to sleep and hearing monsters screaming all through the night. So. Yeah, so that's what I'll do. I mean, anything else? The, the bad news is, even if you get to very high levels, um, the collective ego doesn't like you staying at those levels. Because why? Because you're now you're now a teacher of truth. You know, so wherever you go, you're dispelling dispelling darkness. You know, you're you're set, you're, you're in integrity. As soon as you're in integrity and you're dispelling darkness wherever you go. People who have vested interests will be extremely angry at you and will want to derail you everywhere, wherever you go, because um, uh, you, you say things which make them deeply upset. Uh, and also, even the higher you go up, you can just say things and people just get very, very upset, especially if they're below, below integrity, because um, they, you, are, you are everything that they are not. Um, so, remember there's two, there's two levels, there's above integrity, below integrity, and we're, they're like, we're totally different fish. Those above integrity are into honesty, integrity, love and service, and doing the right thing. Those below integrity are all about self-centered, selfish needs, and the two do not meet, you know. So one of the things to realize when you go into high states Whoever in your, in, in, in your environment is below integrity, like, um, at some, they will not like you. Maybe if you're in a position of power, they'll leave you alone. But they, they will be, they will, everything you, you are is everything they detest, you know. Uh, so just be aware of that. Also as well, um, I, if I can, to the option I'm available, and I, I am, because I've always chosen, you know, if, uh, and Hawkins says it, you know, seek holy company as much as you can. I mean, I do not want to, you know, like, I do not seek out environments which are low integrity, full of people who like to gossip and attack each other. You know, if I'm in that environment, I'd probably try and get out of that environment as, as quickly as possible. So sometimes you're in environments where there are nice people and there are people below integrity. Um, but uh, uh, like where I am now is like I have a life, uh, and, you know, I love my father, my father loves me. He does give me challenges from time, uh, from time to time. But, you know, I'm in spiritual groups most of the time uh, and doing spiritual stuff. And, and, and so it's like as you keep choosing spiritual stuff and spiritual environments, your life starts to transform where you get more and more spiritual friends and more like and then eventually like all your days in spiritual environments with people who want to be spiritual i found like i used to work in the stock market very unspiritual 
So you keep choosing the higher and higher vibrations. Like I would never want to choose a low vibration environment. If an option came up for a low vibration environment, I would definitely say no. Because even if they offered me tons of money uh, and, uh, and whatnot, you know, because Remember, once you go into these, once you go into the observer, once you go into these high spiritual states, you can, at the highest level, you transcend everything. So you can be even in negative environments and it not affect you. But still, you wouldn't want to do that, even if, you know, I mean, you just like, you know, so there is always a possibility, even if you're in a very high state, if you stick around people who are at very low vibration, they may eventually pull you out. You know, they'll be looking for a chink of yarn. So I would always try and choose bosses, workplaces and situations with the highest thing. Like, if I knew there was, uh, like I was, there was someone I, I was working with in a, in a spiritual environment, you know, and she was, she had uh, a, high, a high profile corporate job. And she was working in that company and it was very, very stressful and very, very pressurized. So I was giving her all the tools to work on the spiritual stuff. And she was having to pray for a boss, transcend the environment, feel her feelings, do all the processing. And then eventually what happened was there was an opportunity in that company for a different job. And she applied for it, it had, and it had a less sexy title than the title she had, but the same pay. And she was intuitively guided to take that job in a different division with a less sexy title. And she went there and she got the same pay and it was a serene environment, you know. And, you know, when you get to the, when, as you go up higher, that is grace looking after you. You know, that was your ego choosing the, the, the high money title with people in ego all around you, non-stop with pressure and stress. But there was another division with a less glamorous title and the same money and you're, you're just surrounded by serenity and she had, you know, there was a, so that's the thing, you know, if I had, a, even if I was walking, working in a corporate environment, I would just think, what's the most serene and peaceful environment if I'm going to work in this company? These guys are nice, they're serene, okay, the job title is not so sexy, but I can go to a higher vibration, I can do more good, I can do more spiritual, I, I, I choose that, you know, so if it was like, okay, there's like several job opportunities coming up, this one's like an extra 10 grand, but everyone's a bastard in that division, and they look like they're on drugs, all of them. And this one's like five grand less, and these guys look like they're really nice people, they're quite serene and quite loving. I'd choose that one in the company, because, you know, I can go to a higher vibration. The vibration brings everything realize your vibration brings everything. When you choose something because it's more money, but it's in an, in an ego environment, but you think it's going to be, you're going to get more money and more kudos. But, you know, it, that's not the thing that's going to make you happy. Because mm -hmm. you're now in a vibration which is lower. And so, when you're, when, if you are in a high vibration, you choose an environment which is lower, you've got, just to choose that means you, I would say you, you probably chose it out of an ego to choose an environment which is more a higher thing but is full of people who are in ego. It's probably an ego temptation and it will drag you down. Just that choice to choose it means you're, it was probably an ego temptation in my view. And so you've said yes to going down. You've, you've just given the option to go down. And as you say yes to it, you enter that environment and pull you down. As your vibration goes down, everything will start to become more manageable. You know, it will start clawing you. You know, it's the same in all things. When you go to a high vibration, if you say yes to something at a lower vibration, it can pull you down. If you say no to something, you know, you, you hold your vibration. Yeah. So that's a bit of a loose thing. Everything is contextual, but it's an idea. I mean, I... Um, and... If you can go to an even higher vibration, just trust more opportunities will come to you at a higher vibration by saying no to a lower vibration. I don't know if that makes sense. Always choose the higher serenity and peace and go deeper into yourself. And then that will at some point bring you something even better. 
But in the short term, when you choose something which can potentially take your vibration down, because it seems like in the short term you're getting external stuff, I would, personally, I wouldn't choose it. I would like keep humble and wait for some, that go to a higher vibration, wait for that vibration to bring you something at a higher vibration. Let the vibration bring stuff to you as opposed to cho choosing things which seem to be very good on the outside but might be taking you to a low vibration environment. Because everything is your, is, you know, like if I'm in a place of the infinite and the timeless and I'm saying, keep saying no to things which might take me to a place of being more limited, I trust sometimes that's the test. The test is this glamorous, exciting thing which seems to offer you so much but potentially will take your vibration down. I don't think that's a great idea. I would, I would say, I would, I would contextualize that as an ego temptation and say, okay, I say no to that. I'll just work on going to a higher serene, a higher vibration of the infinite and wait for something to come to me which seems to be in alignment with that. And I found that to be my experience.